Hello and welcome to our pre-show run-up for the 38th annual Golden Joystick Awards. I am your warm-up act for today's festivities. My name is Travis Willingham and you might know me as the voice of Thor in Marvel's Avengers. Some would say I also have the body of Thor too. Hmm? No? Anyone? Oh, it's my house. No one's in here. Uh, over the last few weeks, you have cast millions of votes in support of your favorite games on GamesRadar.com. And now, we are less than 30 minutes away from revealing the winners. The Golden Joysticks are held in such special regard because they are voted for by you, the gaming public. And don't worry, we are confident that no bad losers will be taking legal action against our vote-counting process. But before we start handing out tiny metal joysticks to the year's best games, I've got a few extra surprises to share with you, including some exclusive trailers. No, one of them is an Elden Ring. We are sorry. You should also be on the lookout for special messages during the show from our friends at Blanco's Block Party. Simply head over to blancos.com slash register and enter the code Golden Joysticks for a chance to win a Boss Dino Founders Pack worth over $200 in value and gain immediate access to the private beta. But before that, let's pop on our rose-tinted glasses and take a look back over the first half of the year with the first part of our review show, The Year in Games 2020. How are we going to get 20 minutes of light entertainment out of this year? We can't even film anything. We've had to do some of it with puppets. Uh, there's only one puppet, actually, because of a labour dispute. What sort of labour dispute? Well, you need your other end to hold the script. Hello and welcome to the Golden Joysticks Review of the Year 2020, where we will attempt to wade through Abyss Year and find all the games and gaming moments which gave us joy, solace and a tiny bit of hope in a year that even survivors of the Hindenburg disaster would describe as a bit much. A year which would have been completely irredeemable were it not for video games. Wonderful video games which have kept us sane, kept us entertained, kept us connected, allowed us to pretend we can still travel the earth or even escape it to worlds beyond. In 2020, video games haven't just been a hobby, they've been a lifeline to countless millions of people. And as a result, the games industry is one of the few to have enjoyed record-breaking profits throughout which it richly deserves having almost single-handedly stopped the entire year from being 100% terrible. Thanks to games, it's only been 99% terrible. So thank goodness for that 1%. Not the 1%. We shouldn't thank the 1%. We should seize their assets and use their oh, wealth. Come on, let's get on with it. I'm not ready. 2020 sprang into life when three Walking Dead games got released in January, which in hindsight comes off as some kind of cosmic joke, but in reality just means that there's too many Walking Dead games. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, that came out in January. January feels like a lifetime ago. It's kind of grinding hellscape of a century that has been 2020. Better news was around the corner though as the magnificent Kentucky Route Zero came to an end, closing out seven years of people seeing it in their Steam library and going, oh yeah, I should play that at some point. Right before launching Counter-Strike, or whatever it is you do instead of playing one of the best pieces of interactive fiction in 20 years. Yeah, look, you played Fable 2 just because it had a dog in it. But listen, this has got a dog in it and it's good. Also, there was some fuss in the media about a virus or something, but I don't think that ever came to anything. It's a weirdly difficult year to pick a game of the year, so I'm going to give you a trio. Microsoft Flight Simulator, because it just blew my mind. Final Fantasy VII Remake, because it was better than I could have imagined and Streets of Rage 4, because brawlers are still awesome. There's really two ways this oh, could let him in. The first is I make a thinly veiled argument that because of the Xbox Series X and Microsoft's backwards compatibility initiative, that something like Quantum Break or Driver San Francisco should be in the running. Or I go for the less controversial option and just say Call of Duty Warzone. Let's be honest, Shut up, my most... February saw the loss of a true gaming legend, as Kazuhisha Hashimoto, creator of the Konami Code, sadly passed away at the age of 61. This gaming institution was originally created to allow the weak-willed and weak-fingered a chance at getting past the first five seconds of Konami's 80s releases, most of which were about walking left to right and battering people. The Konami Code came to be seen as one of the pop-cultural go-tos of 1980s gaming. The code has been found on everything from the Netflix app to Marks & Spencer's shopping page, as well as being used by Bank of Canada. Bland corporate appropriation aside, the Konami code is a key fixture of gaming culture and will remain so until the end of time, now scheduled to occur in the third quarter of 2021. 
In other news, we got to see stylish violence and politeness simulator Yakuza 5 make the jump to PS4, providing yet another extremely satisfying outlet for people who love to shut other people's heads and car doors but can't stand the idea of rudeness, which essentially makes it the most British game of the year despite being from 2012 and Japanese. Hunt Showdown hit PS4, representing a delightful blend of arachnophobia and body horror that, frankly, none of us needed, and the magnificent dreams was sent screaming into the world, bringing with it jaw-dropping user-created photorealistic forests, much like the ones we'll be living in after society collapses. Speaking of which, Zombie Army 4 Dead War also hit the streets, capping a stellar few years for Rebellion developments, who've become the world's preeminent purveyors of undead sniping since Prince Philip stopped briefing the press about his children. Later in 2020, they also launched Sniper Elite 4 on Switch, and they literally own 2000 AD, so it seems like every year is a stellar year in Rebellionville. Town. Rebellion Town. Burns, remember that time you reckoned you were a big shot TV producer? No. And you got all dressed up in your toss of sunglasses and your scarf and that? That never happened. And you pitched a strontium dog TV show to Rebellion CEO Jason Kingsley and then he shot you with a crossbow? He didn't shoot me with a crossbow. No, I heard he shot you with a crossbow. Everyone in Hollywood calls you, um, Stephen who was shot with a crossbow. Didn't happen. Oh, you're gonna say it's a longbow. I know what a longbow a wound looks like and yours look like a crossbow wound, career. so don't give me any of this crap. Listen, I was menaced with a crossbow and not shot. Your microphone's rubbish. March saw the release of Animal Crossing New Horizons on Switch and some other games that weren't Animal Crossing New Horizons on Switch. Those other games don't matter, however, as AC went on to devour the free time of everyone who encountered it, which was a remarkable feat in a month when the human race collectively had less to externally occupy them than at any previous point in history. I mean, I'm 750 hours into my save, and because of 2020, it's become the game that has been my social space. It's been my connection between me and my friends. It's become my lifeline to a little slice of normalcy. Half-Life Alex brought a long-awaited update to the Legendary series, and its VR exclusivity finally made mainstream gaming accessible to the super-rich. Designed as a killer app for virtual reality, it required thousands of pounds worth of equipment and a decent-sized living room to get the best out of it. Barriers to entry that seemed prohibitive to much of Half-Life's audience. Hear me out here for a second, because earlier this year I had to make this really difficult decision. On the one hand, do I buy a new PC? Do I buy a VR headset? Do I rent an apartment big enough to make use of said VR headset? And do I buy a copy of Half-Life Alex to use all of this stuff? Or do I try and fill out some of the gaps in my record collection by buying new LPs from Frankie and the Witchfingers, Psychedelic Porn Crumpets, Stonefield, the list goes on. Listen, I'm not saying I made the right decision, I'm just saying that's why I haven't played Half-Life Alex yet. Shut up, West. Why haven't I played Half-Life Alex? Well, actually I have. But I played it on Oculus Quest with a PC and the link cable, which means I had to buy said link cable. So I ended up with this one that was too short, this one that was the wrong type, and this one which isn't for an Oculus Quest at all. Which is probably the reason that I haven't finished Half-Life Alex. I haven't played Half-Life Alex because I am someone's aunt. So I did play Half-Life Alex, and maybe it's because I don't have a normal house. Uh, I haven't played Half-Life Alex, and it doesn't matter that I haven't because I'm the narrator. I do want to get to the end though, so that's my goal for 2021. To balance things out, the game was given out free with selected high-end VR headsets, which Seems a bit redundant, like bundling every 10 grand Rolex with a lifetime membership of the Conservative Party. Rockstar Games co-founder Dan Hauser left the company, making it even less likely that we'll see GTA 6 before World War 3, and the ESA officially cancelled E3. That's the Entertainment Software Association, not the European Space Agency, which frankly has no business cancelling a trade show, even one that is full of absolute rockets. Elsewhere, Microsoft unveiled the Xbox Series X, which we were told was very powerful. So powerful, in fact, that MS spent all of its time asking how it could possibly build it, and none of its time asking whether it should look like that. Now, here's what I will say about all of the systems available. The Shut up, West. As April unfolded like the dawning realisation at the beginning of a zombie movie that things were not going to be okay, Resident Evil 3 launched with a live-action opening in which the people of Raccoon City grapple with the dawning realisation that things were not going to be okay, which perhaps didn't so much capture the zeitgeist as tranquilise it before shooting it with a rocket launcher. 
Nemesis returned, the game wasn't very long, and generally it was accepted to be fine. Everything's fine. Final Fantasy VII Remake launched, and it was also fine. A fitting tribute to one of the most iconic games of all time, boasting amazing visuals and sound, and a stylish update to the setting which provided plenty of surprises, even for those who played it back in the 90s. Not everyone liked these surprises, of course, but you can't please everyone. Or anyone. When the team behind Final Fantasy VII Remake first started making the game, you've got to imagine they were pretty pleased with how relevant the story of the original still feels. I mean, it's 25 years later, and yet the narrative of trying to topple an evil empire that's helmed by an aging blonde businessman somehow still lands. And then there's the fact that the people of this world are tearing it apart and sending it hurtling towards ecological collapse. Who said video games have to be about escapism? What's magical about Final Fantasy VII Remake is that it captures the way the original game, its world and its characters made you feel back in 1997. Now when you put the two games side by side, they don't really have that much in common. And then there's the fact that this is a game that is brave enough to make changes to that original story, some of them fairly severe. Naturally, these changes aren't for everyone. But listen, here's the great thing. If you hate the way that these changes went and you hate what they might mean for future chapters of the remake, that's fine because the original Final Fantasy VII is still there, it's still a masterpiece and it's playable on practically every current platform. So just shut up and play that one. April also saw the launch of the Games for Carers initiative, with publishers such as Microsoft, EA, Sega and many more teaming up with Trade Body Yuki to distribute 85,000 free games to NHS staff. In May, the abhorrent killing of George Floyd in Minnesota sparked worldwide protests against police brutality and systemic racism. Big publishers such as EA, 2K, Riot and Ubisoft donated millions of dollars to Black Lives Matter charities, and itch.io raised over 8 million with its bundle for racial justice and equality. But this is the start of the journey, not the destination. And in the longer term, the industry must keep its promise on diversity and inclusivity and strive to be a voice of change. The Last of Us Part 2 made its triumphant debut in June, releasing to critical and commercial acclaim, while also attracting the ire of certain people on the internet who became overly concerned that their tale of marauding zombies in a post-apocalyptic world caused by mental mushrooms had somehow become less plausible because a woman lifts weights in it. Nevertheless, the game will surely sweep through the award shows this year like COVID-19 in a White House press briefing. My game of the year is probably going to be The Last of Us 2, not because it was necessarily the absolute best game of the year, but because of the discussion and the talk around what it tried to do, the way it tried to sort of elicit feelings from the player, the way people talked about it, and the way it made people think about games and what they can do. I think everyone is going to have covered The Last of Us, Animal Crossing, all the big hits like that. So I'm going to talk to you about some of the smaller titles that have really impacted me this year. Things like Love, a puzzle box filled with stories. That one actually got me a little bit emotional. Uh, things like Give Us on the Switch has been taking up a lot of my time recently, which is a point and click style adventure set in a Cthulhu universe with a talking cat. So that one's definitely worth checking out. My game of the year so far has been If Found. It's a really small kind of game and it tells the story of this transgender woman that's had a falling out with her family and has to move out. And it's kind of about the friends she relies upon on the way to like recovery. The story is more focused on not necessarily like tragedy as such, but more like how you overcome a tragedy and how you pick yourself back up after. There is of course no right or wrong to what is the game of the year, it's whatever you think you've enjoyed the most. It could be something really small and bite-sized, it could be something massive like The Last of Us 2. The key thing is there are no wrong opinions. Unless of course you're Josh West. Yeah, Shut up West. Amber. Nice job. June also welcomed another instalment in a much-loved video game series, with the Command & Conquer remaster moving out onto Windows and generally making everyone who played it feel good and nice, which was some achievement given that outside in the real world it felt like five seconds to midnight. A true labour of love, the remaster is well worth picking up if you, like me, still know the cheat code for the original by heart. Cover tops. Cover tops? Is that a typo? No, it's cover tops. Cover tops? You mean covert ops? 
No. It's obviously covert ops. It is patently covert ops. What, hold on, what does covert ops have to do with a game about it's infiltrating? It's not covert ops. It doesn't make any sense covert for it to say covert ops. ops. You know, I've had enough of this already. It's more likely to be tank tops because that's more militaristic, you like, you know. <laughs> Finally, Star Wars Episode One Racer was re-released for Switch in June, reminding us of a simpler time when the release of a disappointing Star Wars film just annoyed a few critics and made a billion dollars for Lego, instead of becoming the focus of endless YouTube essays by the kinds of grifters and mental incompetence that we used to just ignore in Hyde Park. Midi chlorians you're having a laugh, he's making it up as he goes along. Darth Vader built C-3PO, did he? You think he'd have bloody mentioned it? Jar Jar Binks, what a load of old guff! Anyway, she's filed the divorce now. Ah yes, so many happy memories. And to think, we did most of that while cosplaying as Bane. <sighs> yes. <laughs> What a wild ride. <laughs> and speaking of wild rides, it is time for our first exclusive trailer of the evening. Time to take to the high seas. Now getting very close to the awards, but uh, uh, just a second. Yeah, I I'm hearing that there may need to be a recount for best game expansion. <sighs> Things were that close in the voting this year. It's, it's really your piece. In order to buy more time, let's continue our trip down memory lane, carefully stepping over all the bodies of our digital enemies. It's part two of the Year in Games 2020. Before we dive back into making jokes at everyone else's expense, it's time to talk about even more essential change across the games industry. June saw the New York Times reporting on widespread sexism and harassment across the industry, and since then we have seen dozens of similar incidents reported. But it shouldn't have taken the New York Times shining a spotlight to start these conversations. Gaming's Me Too movement demands listening, believing, and immediate change. Women do sell games, they also make them, market them, purchase and play them. Even if you don't show them in trailers, try to fob them off with gift cards for harassment and then have to take a flamethrower to your upper management when the truth eventually comes out about your sexist behaviour. Thankfully, the beginnings of a change have finally arrived and there are glimmers of hope. But we've got a long way to go before we can consider our industry to be truly inclusive. July was a good month for fans of Assassin's Creed, PlayStation exclusives, and repetitive tasks, as the hauntingly beautiful samurai simulator Ghost of Tsushima finally made its debut on PS4. The Switch received a port of long-standing PC benchmarking favourite Crisis, finally answering the age-old question, can it run Crisis, with, yeah, but why would you want it to? Why don't you just port 3D Mark 06 while you're at it? Faring better was Carrion, a game not about small luggage, but about being a big sentient blob of genetically modified violence, occupied primarily with eating scientists, which, in fairness to the blob, is at least paying them some attention. Speaking of gigantic room-devouring things, Sony finally showed off the PS5 hardware, sparking a wave of spoofs, memes, and general internet do battery that probably wasn't in the marketing plan. Nevertheless, we actually think the machine looks quite good, and nobody's going to care in three months anyway when it's safely tucked under your TV and you never think about it again. Until you move house and have to get it cut out of your front room by the fire brigade. So it's just really nice to see like people be really excited about both consoles, 
both consoles having a really, really strong proposition. It feels like they've each found their kind of approach or niche in the last generation, and they're both really doubling down on that for this generation. When you see how quick Spider-Man loads on PS5, or when you use Quick Resume on the Xbox, it wows you, and it's actually the first time in a long time I'm looking at new consoles and going, wow, these are actually doing something a little bit better than a good PC does it right now. And we haven't been able to say that about new consoles for quite some time. I love Xbox Game Pass, it's amazing. I love PlayStation 5's haptic feedback and the DualSense. Astro's Playroom made me so happy that I don't even really know what to do. I was just sitting alone on my sofa, just squeeing. Actually being able to feel different textures in your game through the pad feels like a revolution and actually brings a connection between you and the games that I've never really experienced before. And the way you can feel every bullet that comes out of uh, like your gun in the controller, um, that's incredible. I'm really excited for what developers can do with that. I love buying and playing video games. <laughs> uh, my bank account does not. Fall Guys became one of the most popular video games in the world in August by harnessing and exemplifying the most simple and fundamental truth at the core of the human condition. That watching people fall over is funny. Part Takeshi's Castle, part Bounty Castle, Fall Guys has received almost universal acclaim for being a breath of fresh air. A popular multiplayer game that isn't predicated on violence. Except it is predicated on violence. Violence that's just funny and nothing to do with seizing natural resources or terminating regimes that undermine neoliberal hegemony. August was also dominated by the news that Apple, Google and Epic were gearing up for a financial royal rumble. Here's actual wrestler Simon Miller to explain what's going down via a tortured, overlong and stupidly complicated metaphor that's only here because we can't invite him over to hit us with a chair. So right, it's like when Hulk Hogan showed up in WCW, right? He used to be in WWF and then Vince McMahon didn't want him anymore. And Vince McMahon was the owner of WWF and he decided that Hulk Hogan was too old. But Hulk Hogan was like, I'm not too old. I can still be a professional wrestler, but first I'm going to try and be a success in Hollywood. And that didn't really work out. And then WCW, who wanted as much success as WWF, they went, we could go and get Hulk Hogan and we can make him like the jewel in our crown. And Hulk Hogan loved that because he wanted his ego to be rubbed and he got really excited. So Ric Flair... The What's any of that got to do with Fortnite? I thought we were here to talk about Ric Flair. Not really. The dispute resulted in some astonishingly childish behaviour, most of which we found funny, but it reminded us that in ideological battles between billion dollar firms quibbling over small print, there are no winners. It's like Alien vs Predator. There's tons of money involved and it's absolutely awful. Much needed escapism was provided by the frankly incredible Microsoft Flight Simulator, which used Microsoft's not at all Orwellian sounding cloud infrastructure to map out most of the world, or at least the bits people cared about, like their own houses. I never thought 2020 would be the year that Flight Simulator came back. I mean, I'm a Flight Simulator 95 girl all the way through. Corona hasn't let me travel this year, but I think I've flown more air miles than I would have normally just from this very seat, so. Thank you, Flight Simulator, for scratching my travel itch, despite the fact I couldn't actually go anywhere. September saw some good news at last, if only for a short moment, as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 arrived, annoying people who know there's no such game as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. It did, however, whisk us back to the late 90s, a nicer time, a better time, before coronavirus, before you started going grey, before you became indentured to a bank for 30 years just to buy a two-bedroom flat that's nowhere near as nice as your childhood home but somehow cost 20 times as much. The long-awaited sequel to Spelunky made its bow, delighting dentists everywhere with its signature mix of one more go appeal and teeth gnashing difficulty. Like the original, it was incredibly popular with masochists, putting it right up there with self-flagellation, visiting a dominatrix and owning a Twitter account. Speaking of heydays, uh, Hades became a genuine sleeper hit which the games press didn't seem to know anything about before launch, presumably because they were all on the internet arguing about whether or not quinoa is problematic. Despite this, Hades has become a smash hit with critics and, who knows, might even win some awards tonight. It's something that everyone should try, even if uh, you're not normally into roguelikes. They've folded in this incredible narrative structure that is just really compelling and makes you want to keep playing. And you've got all of these distant relatives, these gods, 
friends who are helping you. They'll comment on literally everything you're doing, like what weapon you're using or who you died to on the last run. And yeah, they sort of like support you and cheerlead you as you're, you're working your way out of hell. In other news, Microsoft left the job of announcing its smaller, cheaper Xbox, the Series S, to the good people of the internet. The month was dominated by pre-orders for the PS5 and Xbox family of consoles, and how those launches went really smoothly and nothing went wrong at all. Apart from all the crying children, PR apologies, petty sniping, and all the rest of the things we've come to love about gaming. How am I supposed to run a reasonable scalping operation when Curry's and that can't get their act together, eh? I was up all night trying and failing to get nine PlayStations, and I had more tabs on the go than the f Marlboro man. In October, Star Wars Squadron screamed into view with a decent story, tight dogfighting, and seriously impressive cockpit detail. It reminded us all of why we loved the X-Wing and TIE Fighter games back in the day and served as a worthy reimagining of them. Yeah, that's two Star Wars things that were good this year. That's like two more than last year. It's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, um, because that's why you've cut to me to talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is absolutely my game of the year, because I've spent 90 hours playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla in the last two weeks. And I don't think it's a Stockholm thing, do double check, but I do love it. A trip to England, which normally I really don't appreciate, so if, if a game can make me enjoy England, points for that. Um, but I just love it. It's got this great blend of old assassins and new assassins so you can go out with your hidden blade, none of this broken spear nonsense, but you still have all your superpowers. I love the fact that you've got all these really interesting little mysteries to do and you can still air assassinate people, which is wonderful and build your settlement. Amber out of a drinking horn is kind of okay, who knew? I love the fact that you can ride a wolf across Norway or England or anywhere you want. I can't even talk about some of the places that you go to in it, but it's like catnip for actual lore fans. While most people really hate all that modern day stuff, me and about six other people, uh, we actually really enjoy it. So it actually ticked that box too. But yes, settlement, hidden blades, air assassinations, beautiful world, 90 hours in, what could go wrong? because I can't put the thing down until... As America headed to the polls to decide between accelerated decline or decline, another pair of grand old rivals was gearing up for the showdown of the decade as Sony and Microsoft released the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and X to a ravenous public. Both machines arrived armed with a slew of new and exciting features, the Xbox pushing Game Pass, high frame rates and backwards compatibility, and the PS5 being so big it can double as a caravan if necessary. Sorry, catamaran. Yes, next gen is here, and it's bringing gamers around the world to a very solid state indeed. But as we steel ourselves to play GTA V for a third time, perhaps we can take a few moments to look fondly back at the generation that was. The thing that really defined last gen for me was PlayStation really sticking to its adage of for the players. Sony has created exclusive experiences, these huge stories that will go on to define PlayStation legacy. Doom Eternal. I mean, I'm not going to pretend otherwise. It's kind of exactly the same as the Doom they released a few years before that. But if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. Who cares which 500 pound box of conflict minerals you play your seven out of 10 nonsense on when the only game in town is Resistance Comrades? Finding of Isaac, that came out, what, six years ago? And I've still played hundreds of hours of that. So that's probably one of my last gen highlights. Nationalized PlayStation. For me, it's been amazing to see the smaller, more interesting games get spotlighted. And I think Microsoft with Game Pass and just sort of Sony in general have done a really great job of um, even more so holding up um, these smaller games as like really, really attractive prospects. I think smaller games is going to be the future. Uh, we've seen a lot of sort of smaller companies making slightly smaller games, you know, maybe only last sort of 10, 12 hours, but they're still good, they're still valid. She's the means of procrastination! Some really cool games that have sort of come into their own because of lockdown and because of the conditions. So there's stuff like Ring Fit Adventure where lots of people suddenly discovered this excellent fitness game from last year that many had passed over on because they were stuck inside the houses. I'm a red fox, that's the joke. Shut up, West.
And as always, remember, you voted for the games you're about to complain about winning. Again, it's simply amazing what the games industry has achieved. Especially given that all that was done while working at home in our underwear. Imagine what we could accomplish with actual clothes. Never fight the good fight. Anyway, one game that has made it through quarantine is our next exclusive trailer. So, enjoy. Right. Now, oh, wait a moment. Yes, yes, I'm being told over my imaginary earpiece that everything is locked in and the winner's decided. So, <laughs> that's it from me for now. Don't worry, I'll be back. It is time to crown 2020's best games. Yes, the 38th Annual Golden Joystick Awards, hosted by the lovely and talented Laura Bailey, Laura Bailey, are about to begin. So to open the show, please welcome Laura6683, who's performing a medley of tracks inspired by this year's nominees. Let's play a game. How many can you recognize?
What an opener! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 38th Annual Golden Joystick Awards. And thank you again to Laura for that amazing performance. I am Laura Bailey and I'll be your guide for the show. You might know me as Abby from The Last of Us 2 or Black Widow from Marvel's Avengers, but tonight I'm just regular Laura because that's what video games do. They transform us into superheroes. They transport us to incredible worlds and allow us to see through others' eyes. They're an escape in unhappy times and they make the good times even better. Unless the seesaw level comes up in Fall Guys. But tonight's awards celebrate video games and the people who make them. And more importantly, these are your decisions. The Golden Joysticks are the world's biggest public voted game awards. Millions of votes have helped decide our winners. Featuring 20 categories, we'll acknowledge the skills that bring games to life and hand over some tiny golden joysticks to the titles you voted as best of the year. Of course, every good award show needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. So let's start ours with best storytelling. Please welcome the star of Assassin's Creed Origins, Abu Bakr Salim, to present the award. Hello, I'm Abu Bakr Salim. Uh, you may know me as the voice of Bayek from Assassin's Creed Origins, or that crazy guy who decided to open his own studio in the middle of a pandemic called Silver Rain Games. Uh, now, I am thrilled to be here to be presenting the award for best storytelling. You know, where would games be without storytellers? You know, stories have the power to draw us in and raise the stakes. You know, or they can simply transport us to different lives. You know, for example, this year's nominees decided to take us to an apocalyptic viral outbreak and another took us to hell. Anyway, now, let's take a look at this year's nominees. Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition Necro Barista The Last of Us Part 2 Hades Paradise Killer Ghost of Tresima Signs of the Soft If found And the winner is The Last of Us Part 2 well, this is a pretty nice evening. Um, thank you. And with that, I'd like to thank my writing partner in this game, Hallie Gross. Gave up several years of her life to help tell the story, as well as the rest of our writing team, Joshua and Ryan James. And, you know, really storytelling narrative, that's part of our DNA, Naughty Dog. So with that, I have to give a shout out to the entire studio, as well as our partner studios for having worked so hard and come together to tell this quite challenging story. And, you know, um, we wanted to do something that's not your typical video game sequel, as far as the narrative we were putting together. Uh, and while it was controversial for some, we're still quite blown away with how many people resonated with um, The Last of Us Part Two. So, Thank you to the Joystick Awards, and thank you for every single fan that voted for us. Uh, we appreciate it. Take care. Congrats to the team at Naughty Dog. Next up, it's literally the most competitive category of the night. It's best multiplayer game. And to present the prize, it's game director of Apex Legends, Chad Grenier. Hey there, I'm Chad Grenier, game director on Apex Legends. I don't know how I would have gotten through lockdown without gaming with my friends, so it's great to be here presenting the Golden Joystick for best multiplayer game an award that the Apex team and myself were fortunate enough to win last year. Winning this award is a stamp of recognition for all of the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that goes into making a game. And since the game has to be released this year to win, I'm happy to be handing it over to another team that will surely treasure it. Let's take a look at the nominees lining up on this year's starting line. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2.
the Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope. Deep Rock Galactic. Valorant. Fall Guys. Moving out. Animal Crossing New Horizons. Call of Duty Warzone. And the winner is... Fall Guys. Hey, it's Joe from Mediatonic. It's really awesome to win the best multiplayer game at the Golden Joystick Awards. I just want to give a big thanks to Devolver, who have allowed us to make a game we had absolutely no idea how to make, but also to the millions of fans that we've subjected to the slime this far. We felt it was about time that we settled the scores. <laughs> Cheers. Now, if you're impressed by our virtual stage, just wait until you see the games in our next category. Here to announce best visual design, please welcome Devil May Cry 5 producer Matt Walker and director Hideaki Itsuno. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Walker. Hi, it's no Hideaki. This is Capcom and our team made the Devil May Cry 5 for best visual design show. 大変、えー、嬉しく思っておりますありがとうございます、えー、ビジュアルデザインというのはですね、えー、ゲームの価値のかなり大きな部分を占めるそうですので、えー、私たちも大変あの力を入れて作ったものですので大変ありがたいと思っておりますさて今年の、えー、候補作たちは去年にも負けず劣らず素晴らしいものばかりですさてどのタイトルが受賞することになったのでしょうか Well, they take us from 13th century Japan to the rivers of the afterlife to your very own childhood home, but from 20,000 feet in the air. Let's take a look at the nominees for Best Visual Design. The Last of Us Part 2. Ghost of Tushi. Hades. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Spirit Fairy. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Half Life Alex. The winner is. The Last of Us Part 2. On behalf of the Naughty Dog team, I'd like to thank all the gamers who voted for us. It's always an honor to be nominated alongside our fellow developers, and everyone did exceptionally well this year. This visual design award really means a lot to our team, so thank you for picking us, and we really appreciate all your support. Thank you, Golden Joystick Award, for hosting this event and for just making it happen this year. And lastly and personally, I'd like to congratulate my Naughty Dog team for a job well done and for all the hard work and also for all the support from their families. So thank you, congratulations, and have a good evening. Next up, we have a special video from our friends at the ESA Foundation, who provide scholarships and support to people of all ages, race, and gender who are breaking into the video games industry. When I was being bullied, video games were my escape. Growing up, being transgender and having Tourette's has made inclusivity very important to me. I'm a video games designer. 
I want to make games that everyone can play. I decided to make a dance game because I wanted to share what I loved with the rest of the world. And I know dancing is really inaccessible to so many people, so I want to try to bring it to more people. I first started dancing when I was five years old. My mom bought me this little tutu and I called it my ballet suit and I wore it all over the house and danced all over the place. My Tourette syndrome didn't kick in until like I was about 12 years old. I had a lot of vocal tics where I would just say, how, 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 repeatedly. I ended up being bullied a lot. Dancing helped with my Tourette's. I first became aware that I was trans probably around 15 years old. I didn't come out until I was 18. It was something that I kept in the closet for a long time because I felt ashamed. <laughs> Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time. I love the open world aspect of the game. A lot of people always refer to Link as Zelda when that's wrong. For me, that reminds me of when people would call me by my old name. Breath of the Wild came out in 2017. I came out October of 2017. Oh. <laughs> I messed up. I'm studying video game design at NYU. I was awarded a scholarship from the ESA Foundation. My freshman year of college, I created a very personal piece. Um, it's essentially how I came out as transgender to my friends and family. I want to give people actual trans representation in video games so people can feel what I felt when I could relate to Link, but I want that representation to be genuine. My new game is called Spotlight, and it is an adaptable VR dancing experience for people who may not get to perform ballet on a stage. One important feature of my game Spotlight is going to be how it's customizable for people with different disabilities. You have rhythmic cues floating around you in VR, and you match them with your head and your arms. Yep, one, two, it's right in front of my face. Eventually, the targets will appear in rhythm to the music. For the initial prototype, it will be to the Sugar Plum Fairy in the Nutcracker. I would love to be part of a group of developers that starts a grassroots movement to create more accessibility features in games. I think we need more of them in the AAA games industry. Now, health and safety guidelines mean we have to disinfect our stage every few awards. So while I socially distance myself from that, let's check in with Travis for more prizes. Thank you, Laura. Of course, I'd much rather be sharing a stage with you in person, but at least I get a shiny stage of my own. Well, I'm, I'm assuming it's shiny. With the power of video game graphics, it can literally put me anywhere. Oh, please don't let it be the seesaw level in Fall Guys. Oof. As Laura said, I am here to announce the winners of a few more awards. So let's start with the best game expansion. The nominees are... Total War, Warhammer 2, The Warden and the Paunch, Mortal Kombat 11, Aftermath, The Outer Worlds, Peril on Gorgon, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Expansion Pass, Control, AWE, The Sims 4, Star Wars, Journey to Batu, No Man's Sky, Origins, Final Fantasy 14, Patch 5.3, Reflections in Crystal. And the winner is... No Man's Sky, Origins. Wow, uh, thank you so much. Um, you know, we're really lucky that every day we get to come to work and, and make games. It's a, it's a privilege for us. And No Man's Sky, our game has been, you know, a joy to work on. We're really lucky. But it's not always easy. And, you know, no Man's Sky has not always been easy. It's been a roller coaster. And moments like these, they they mean a lot to the team. Um, you know, four years on from launch, winning best expansion. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a surprise 
and it's great. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to the team, so thank you. Now, this may have been one of the least mobile years in gaming, but hey, here's Mobile Game of the Year. And the nominees are Round Guard, Next Stop Nowhere, Bird Alone, If Found, A Monster's Expedition, Little Orpheus, Lego Builder's Journey, Game of Thrones Tale of Crows. And the winner is Lego Builder's Journey. Hi guys, uh, on behalf of the Lightbrick team, both here on site in Copenhagen and uh, online working from home, we'd like to uh, shout out a big, big thanks for this award. We are deeply grateful and uh, hugely humbled by this. Um, thanks to everyone who voted for us and thanks to uh, Games Radar and Future for setting all this up. It really, really means a lot to us. Uh, we can't wait to show you what we're up to next. So uh, from all of us to all of you, big, big thanks. Bye bye. This next award is music to my ears. I mean, it's, it's literally the award for best audio, so. And the nominees are Half-Life Alex, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Paradise Killer, The Last of Us Part Two, Resident Evil 3, Streets of Rage 4, Call of Duty Warzone, Ghost of Tsushima. And the winner is the Last of Us Part 2. Wow, this is really an incredible night for us. Uh, on behalf of Rob Kreckel, our audio director, uh, the entire dialogue and sound design teams, and our external partners and collaborators with whom we work so closely, I just want to say thank you. Uh, first to Games Radar uh, and to the Golden Joystick Awards. Um, for 38 years now, you have been... Uh, recognizing and honoring the hard work of game developers, and so it's an incredible honor to uh, be nominated uh, in this category. Uh, and secondly, and most importantly, to our fans. Uh, this has been an amazing year for video games in every genre and in the medium as a whole. And so uh, to be put in a list of such fantastic nominees and then to be uh, chosen for this award is, is really humbling and a, and, a, and, a, and a great honor for us, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, we can't do what we do without the support of the entire studio from the executive team all the way down to QA. And so I want to thank them for their hard work and their, their diligence and their passion uh, to bring this story to life. Um, it allowed us to do our best work. And so once again, thank you and have a great evening. Hey, hey, Laura, sounds like all that grunting paid off. Isn't that great? Yeah? Yeah. She's happy. Anyways, congrats to our winners, and I will be back with even more awards soon. But before we head back to the main stage, let's take a look at some of the most exciting games of 2021 and beyond. And who knows, maybe these will be competing for a golden joystick next year.
to come at the Golden Joysticks. We crown your ultimate game of the year, a musical performance by Harry Mack. And don't forget to head to Blancos.com slash register and enter the code Golden Joysticks for a chance to win a Boss Dino Founders Pack worth over $200 in value and gain immediate access to the private beta. But up next is the best indie game. Introducing this award are last year's winners from Mobius Games, creators of Outer Wilds, Alex Beecham and Logan Verhoof. Hi, I'm Alex Beecham. And I'm Logan Verhoof. Last year, Mobius Digital had the honor of winning this award with Outer Wilds, and now we are thrilled to pass the joystick to one of this year's nominees. All the games on this year's list do an amazing job, not just at design and storytelling, but at expanding and diversifying what games are about, who they're made by, and what games can be. The golden joystick can only go to a single game. But it goes without saying that each of these games is equally deserving of recognition. Value judgments like these are always subjective, and time is probably an illusion. So, without further ado, let's take a look at this year's nominees. Spelunky 2 Factorio Hades Lair of the Clockwork God Kentucky Route Zero Paradise Killer Necrobarista Freaks And the winner is... Hades. Hey, on behalf of all of us at Supergiant Games, we wanted to say thank you so much for honoring Hades with this award. It really means a lot, as we've been working together as a small independent studio now for more than 10 years, uh, starting with our first game Bastion, then on to Transistor, and then Pyre, and now most recently Hades, where we sought to combine the best aspects of our previous games in a whole new way. Uh, we like doing things a little bit differently every single time, and one of the big and somewhat scary uh, new changes for us on Hades was to develop a game in early access. That meant we'd be collaborating with our community, getting feedback on everything from the balance to the technical performance to the story throughout the majority of development. Uh, we figured that with your help, uh, we'd be able to make a bigger game than ever before and with any luck, uh, also maybe a better game than ever before. And it turned out uh, we were right. You inspired us to really realize so much of the potential of this concept and you kept us motivated and focused on the most important things about this game uh, all the way through, including uh, through what's been a rather interesting and a rather tough year. Uh, so we share this award with you and we're really, really grateful for your support and thanks to everyone for playing. Our next prize is the Still Playing Award. So here's hoping you managed to tear yourself away long enough to vote. Here are the nominees. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Pokemon Go. Grand Theft Auto Online. Sea of Thieves. Final Fantasy XIV Fortnite Apex Legends Minecraft
And the winner is Minecraft. I know I speak for everyone at Mojang Studios when I say thank you to everyone who is still playing Minecraft and building with us. We are so honored to have been considered next to some standout classics, and we are grateful for the entire Minecraft community that has built Minecraft alongside us for the last 11 years. Huge thanks for this award, and I hope you're all staying safe. A worthy winner. And now it's time for our first trailer of the award show, and things are getting creepy. It's all falling apart. I should have known better than to listen to you. I let him into my home. What? He wouldn't. He couldn't have. Shut up. You better do it fast. Because if you don't, I will kill him. How about an award to calm our nerves after that? Our next winner is going to be difficult to fit in a single Zoom call window, though. It's Best Studio. To announce the winners, please welcome F1 Franchise Game Director, Lee Mather. Hi, I'm excited to present the award for Best Studio. Behind every great game is a great studio. And this award celebrates the people who make games happen. From the artists and animators who create the avatars which we control, to the programmers and designers who then create the holes our avatars fall into. Collectively, the nominees have found multiple new and exciting ways of killing my avatar, but for that, I salute them. And the nominees are... Mediatonic. Media Molecule. Paradox Development Studio Naughty Dog Respawn Infinity Ward Supergiant Games Sucker Punch And the winner is... Naughty Dog This is a nice evening. <laughs> um, thanks again to Joystick Awards and for all the fans that uh, voted for us. It was already an honor just to be alongside fellow devs that we look up to and admire. So to win this thing is um, still surreal. Um, games are a collaborative medium. Uh, it takes an army to put a game like The Last of Us together with, with everyone in the studio and all of our sister studios. Um, and it's been an absolute honor to watch each team and each member of those teams come together and continue to raise the bar of what we could do with games. And that's what drives us. That's what inspires us. We inspire each other to do the kind of work that we do. And I also want to thank our partners at Sony. Um, and I specifically want to call out uh, Sam Thompson, Scott Rohde, Connie Booth, Sean Layden, Jim Ryan, um, your support over the years for our studio's ambition, for our creative choices, um, have played a massive part in our success. Um, so our hat's off to you. Uh, so on behalf of myself, um, our company president, Evan Wells, 
uh, and everyone at Naughty Dog. Thank you. It means a lot. You know, I think I can see the heads of Xbox and PlayStation fighting over the complimentary snacks, so I'm gonna have to go and break that up. While I'm gone, let's check back in with Travis for more awards. Yes, I return. <laughs> I didn't realize they had snacks on the main stage. If any tech people want to render some food on mine, that would be great. Just not coconuts. It's all I've had to eat on my Animal Crossing Island for six months, and the results are not pretty. Anyway, uh, let's get on and announce the winners of a few more awards. So we will start with eSports Game of the Year. The nominees are Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, FIFA 20, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, League of Legends, NTT IndyCar Series iRacing, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Valorant, Fortnite. And the winner is... Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Next, we are clicking like and subscribe for best new streamer or broadcaster. The nominees are Shiv FPS, Nega Oryx, Queen Eliminator, Steve in Spawn, I am Brandon, Hello It's Colo, Dovari, Big Cheese Kit. And the winner is. I am Brandon. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Brandon. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to Games Radar and the Golden Joystick Awards for awarding me the best new streamer slash broadcaster award. I am very shocked. I did not think that I was going to win, and I was very shocked when I was nominated in the first place. So thank you to everybody who voted for me. Um, and to the other nominees, they're all great people. So please make sure you check them out. They're all great friends of mine. So make sure you check them out. Um, but I am very honored to receive this award. This is something I've never thought I would ever ha have in my life. Um, but I, I do thank everybody who has um, been very supportive of me and, and understanding my message of trying to bring a more representation of POC um, for LGBT folks in the gaming and slash streaming industry space um there's a place for all of us to enjoy games and i feel that everybody should have that opportunity to be able to find their dreams within this industry and make it happen um i really do appreciate this and thank you so much this is definitely a milestone in my life that i will never forget and uh, i don't want to be the first or last person to come through um you know as a poc person as an lgbt person coming through here um, there's more of us out there and I hope we all get represented in the same way. Um, but thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate it. Um, thank you, thank you. Our next award is an E for Everyone. It's Best Family Game. The nominees are Animal Crossing New Horizons, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Moving Out, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Minecraft Dungeons, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Paper Mario The Origami King, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. And the winner is... Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Hey, it's Joe again from Mediatonic. Uh, turns out we won two awards. Um, yeah, that's really awesome to win Best Family Game. You know, when we set out to make Fall Guys, making something that was a multiplayer game for the whole family was really the thing that we wanted to achieve. So to, to win this award is really amazing. I'm gonna go and get in the shower. Thanks very much for the awards, guys. Cheers. Congrats to all the winners. Now, before we head back to the main stage, who's up for another exclusive trailer? This one features guns, drums, and guns.
It's a good time to be a fan of things neon and dystopian. Just ask our next host. It's time for Best Gaming Community and to introduce the award from CD Projekt Red, creators of Cyberpunk 2077. Please welcome Holly Bennett. Hi everybody, it's Holly here from CD Projekt Red. Now in today's world, when we can't always be together, video game communities are more important than ever before. They give us a chance to escape and unwind and to reconnect with friends old and new. And one of the most rewarding parts about making games is watching those vibrant communities grow. And this award celebrates not only the studios and their games, but most importantly, the incredible people who form around them. So without further ado, here are the nominations. Animal Crossing New Horizons Warframe Minecraft Final Fantasy Fourteen. Dreams Sea of Thieves Fortnite Fall Guys and the winner is Minecraft. Hello, Golden Joystick Awards. On behalf of Mojang Studios and Minecraft, I would like to say a big thank you for the Best Game Community Award. The Minecraft community has always impressed and inspired us, and their creativity and excitement is what makes our work so rewarding. Again, thank you. Now ever dreamt of being a superstar DJ? Then let's mix things up quite literally, with a demo of Fuser, the virtual music festival that lets you mix like a superstar DJ. What's my perfect music festival? Obviously, it starts with the music, the sound, the mix, right? We've got over 100 songs ready to go, from rock to pop to rap to reggaeton and all the loops, guitar riffs, bass, vocals and more. I need to create my mix. Let me show you. I'm gonna start with that synth, this bass, those vocals, play around with the BPM and drop that beat. Now I need to look right. With awesome customization tools, I can build up my own DJ and work my way from the day shift to the headline set. And as I go, I'll unload to different clothes and accessories to keep my look unique. You already know that my stage show is one of a kind. So, my mix is right, my fit is sick. What's next? Collabs with the world. My festival has a huge community from all around the globe that I can easily tap in for inspiration. We can even host epic sets together that anyone can tune into. And if they missed it, well, I could just record it and send it to my mates and my mates to be. You want a music game that lets you do it all? Welcome to Fuser. Next up is our first critically chosen award of the show, selected by the Golden Joystick Awards judging panel. This is an award close to my heart, but sadly, not close to my shelf. It's best performer. And as performers ourselves, I thought Travis and I would present this in person. Hello, 2020 has been filled with incredible performances. <laughs> and I am not just saying this, but Laura, your turn as Abby in The Last of Us Part Two was unlike anything we have seen from you before. It was amazing. Thank you, baby. Yeah. Your role in The Last of Us Two was, was really good as well as um Giant Rattler. Yeah, he's a fan favorite. Huh. But this 
award isn't for us. Nope. And we thought uh, instead we'd surprise our winner with a phone call. So here we go. Oh, hi, Sandra. Hi. Hey, girl. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? Pretty good. Oh, good. You know, we have we have a little bit of news to share with yeah. you. Did you know, Sandra, that you have won Best Performer in this year's Golden Joystick Award? What? <laughs> <laughs> so wonderful. Yeah. thank you guys for talking. <laughs> I would ask you how you feel about it, but it, I, I think you feel pretty good. Um, I feel pretty good. I just did my mascara, but whatever. <laughs> do, it. do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah. yeah, we're yes. being for real. Do you want to say anything? Give a give a speech. Thank anybody. Go for it. Uh, am, am, oh, to, to who am I being recorded? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is all happening for real right now. Wow. Um, I cannot believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I oh, was, I think, nominated with like some really amazing people. And I was like, no, there's no way. <laughs> um, and like for for you guys to be sharing it with me is, is really, really, really special. And like I love my cast so, so dang much. And I love Sean so, so dang much. And, and Bo Crutcher and like every single person who is involved here, like it's incredible. So like, it's not, this is not for me. This is for all of you guys. Did you have any idea what the phone call was about? You just had no. No, I thought this was going to be another interview. I was ready. Oh my for God. Like, this not is a girl. big one to put your makeup on. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You won. Oh, oh my won. God. You guys, that's so cool. Thank you guys for getting Travis and Laura to tell me. Like, how sweet. <laughs> Thank you guys. I love you guys so much. We love you. Oh, yeah. And I think we should watch some of your performance right now. Yeah, let's take that's a look. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. okay. <laughs> I was just some weird kid from Jersey who didn't fit in. The Avengers were set up. The so-called cure, it's just not lining up. There's something wrong and I can feel it. So you're both just gonna walk away? The Avengers were set up. Cap was murdered. You think I don't know that? Well, I don't believe it. Unless you have some kind of astounding proof. I suggest you both get off my land. What is that? I kind of stole something off of Amy's server. Congratulations again to Sandra, and a special mention to all of that game's superb cast, even you, Travis. Next up, we recognize one of the great new stars of 2020. Please welcome to present the award from Mo Yang Studios, Lydia Winters. Hi there. I'm excited to be presenting the Breakthrough Award on behalf of Mojang Studios and Minecraft. The Breakthrough Award is all about celebrating rising stars with previous winners like Subnautica, Stardew Valley, and Untitled Goose Game. And now it's time to add another winner to the mix. The 2020 Breakthrough Golden Joystick goes to... Easy to play, yet difficult to walk away from, Among Us is an indie multiplayer game set in space. The twist is that each player is privately assigned a role as a crewmate or an imposter. You need to work together to solve tasks while uncovering and kicking out the imposters in your group. This game of trust and deception generated amazing word of mouth, and Among Us became as much a social platform for connecting with friends as a challenge of social deduction. 
Among Us was originally released in 2018, but broke out during this year's global lockdown after Twitch streamers realized the game's tantalizing potential for unscripted entertainment. Among Us has brought everyday gamers together with high-profile celebrities and even sitting politicians, all to enjoy what has quickly become one of the most popular games on Steam, iOS, and Android in 2020. Hey everyone, thanks so much for voting for us for the Golden Joystick Breakthrough Award. We've been continually surprised by the amazing community that's gathered around Among Us, and we'll never stop being grateful. Whether you played the game two minutes ago or when it first came out two years ago, we're excited to keep improving and giving back to all that have supported us. You're all crewmates in our hearts. And of course, a special shout out to our friends, families, and partners um, who have made this all possible. We're happy for this award to be uh, a time where we can recognize all the people who believed in us. Cheers. Thanks. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For our next award, the judges searched far and wide for people who used gaming to make a difference in a challenging year. The Outstanding Contribution Award is a reflection of their amazing work. Let's take a look. Okay. With the gaming industry pulling together like never before, this year's Outstanding Contribution Award doesn't focus on an individual achievement. Here's just a few amazing initiatives from members of the video game community that both you and I belong to. Back in June, we ran the Itch.io Bundle for Racial Justice and Equality, which was a direct response to the murder of George Floyd and other acts of violence committed against black Americans by the police in 2020. And I thought, you know, maybe we could raise a couple of thousand dollars and that would help. Uh, but what happened was the biggest bundle of all time. Uh, it closed with over 1,700 games from 1,300 different creators, and it raised over $8 million. I think a lot of charities have struggled uh, this year in particular to raise money because obviously live events haven't really been happening, so a lot of stuff has to have been online. And we basically announced that whoever pledged to donate the largest amount of money to Special Effect would get their branded costume added to Fall Guys. We are doing it what we're doing because we can. Why wouldn't we? If you need to know one thing about us here at 11-bit or Dead Mage, is that we are pretty crazy about our animals. Lately, we have created with Dead Mage, the Children of Marta game, a DLC called Paws and Claws. This DLC gathers funds directly for Humane Society International that helps animals, uh, both domestic and wild. In just one week, uh, we have managed to gather along with community members more than uh, $60,000 for Humane Society International. And it's actually very rewarding to see how we act as a group of people that you can commonly name as gamers towards such a um, good cause. Of course, the industry has contributed more than just raising money. In 2020, we saw games work harder than ever before to become accessible and more inclusive. From The Last of Us Part 2's unrivaled options for those with vision, hearing and motor accessibility issues, to Team 17 adding an assist mode to titles such as Overcooked All You Can Eat. Of course, social distancing made it more difficult for us to connect in person, adding to a difficult year for mental health. Here are just a few ways that video games embrace their role in building communities and connecting people. Hello, I'm Gary Witter, creator and host of Animal Talking. I created Animal Talking really as a way during the early months of the pandemic to try and put a smile on my face and uh, the people around me uh, during a time in which many of us really needed something to smile about and, and to cheer us up. What we realized was that gaming is powerful in terms of its role of creating play in our lives and that and play is a part of a high quality life. And so within a matter of days, just a few days, the team at Electronic Arts pivoted quickly and developed the Stay Home Play Together campaign. We 
wound up booking some of the biggest celebrities in the world coming onto our show. People like Sting and Brie Larson and Selena Gomez. It's just been absolutely uh, wonderful and ridiculous and in, in the most delightful way. We were encouraging people to heed the shelter in place directives, but also to get something else that they were going to be missing, which is that social connection. And humanity responded, players responded, existing players got engaged and the great social connection and new people came in. The success of a show like Animal Talking, more than anything, really demonstrates the incredible, incredible power of video games to bring people together and to lift our spirits and make us all happy and believe in the power of human connection, uh, especially now at a time when we need to hear that message, I think more than ever. So we thank you and everyone who has worked so hard to make the world a better place in this difficult year. There are far too many initiatives and charities to recognise in one video, and we'll be doing our best to maintain an ongoing list of valuable causes on gamesradar.com. The road ahead might remain uncertain, but as our next contributor will tell you, it's okay to ask for help. Hi, Joystick Awards. I'm Ian Wright. I'm here to speak to you today about loneliness. It's been a tough year for all of us, a year unlike any other. In England, between three and nine million adults say they feel lonely often and always. And we know that loneliness during COVID-19 is impacting some people's well-being. In times like this, it's more important than ever to reach out to others to talk. Talk about how you're feeling and how they're doing. Let's make sure we all look out for one another. Take a few moments to watch this video and head to letstalkloneliness.co.uk and find out more. Take it easy. A lot of people around the world struggle with mental issues. Having been through a few tough times myself, I think it's important to be there for others when they're struggling. It's good to get it off your chest and to, to come through it is, is a great feeling and it makes you feel stronger. My name is Michael Keane and I'm a centre back at Everson Football Club. For people who are struggling, all I can say is speak to someone. You are going to come through it. Thanks to everyone who's played their part in getting us through this year. Now, I think it's time we have another exclusive trailer, don't you? It's time to enter a living comic book. Mr. Evan Kapnos, the owner of your identity debt, went bankrupt. In a system where you're in debt even before you're born, life and money are just synonyms. Have you ever jacked in? <laughs> Mental bollards will prevent you from leaving the city. Your access to the blockchain will stay disabled. Your service weapon has been disassociated from your ID. You see now, there's something bigger going on here. at the Golden Joysticks, the title you voted for as PlayStation Game of the Year, and an unmissable music performance from Harry Mack. Right, it's time for a console war ceasefire as we celebrate your most voted for picks on individual platforms. Here to present PC Game of the Year from last year's winner, World of Warcraft executive producer, John Haidt. Hello everyone, my name is John Haidt and I'm the executive producer of World of Warcraft at Blizzard Entertainment. I'm honored to present this year's Golden Joystick Award for the best PC game of the year. Last year, we received this award for World of Warcraft Classic. It was a privilege to be nominated and we were overjoyed when you chose us to win. As we look back on a first year full of new adventures, relived journeys, and the connections we made along the way, we want to say thank you to our players. You inspire us as we strive to make World of Warcraft an incredible place to visit. For a lot of 2020, most of our connection with the outside world has been through webcams. But in between those Zoom calls, we've been treated to some much needed entertainment from incredible games, including impressive new releases from some of our favorite franchises.
The nominees for PC Game of the Year are Valorant Crusader Kings 3 The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Death Stranding Hades Half-Life Alex Paradise Killer Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 And the winner is Death Stranding Hello, I'm Jay Bohr from Kojima Productions and I'm truly honored to accept this award on behalf of the entire Kojima Productions team. This has been quite a year for Death Stranding, and the reaction we received when we launched on PC was just incredible. And to win PC Game of the Year is both surreal and extremely humbling all at the same time. So thank you, Golden Joysticks, for this award. This is such a huge honor. I'd also like to thank our friends at Sony Interactive Entertainment and 505 Games for their work in helping us make Death Stranding a global success. And I also want to thank our amazing community for all the support you've given us. Everything you do from sharing motivating messages to cosplayer challenges, these efforts not only drive and inspire us, but they also help us stay connected as well, which we greatly appreciate. So from all of us at Kojima Productions, thanks again for this award. We hope you all are safe and well, and please keep on keeping on. Next up is Best Gaming Hardware. Thankfully, our next host is very easy to plug and play. From the publishers of Untitled Goose Game, Panic, it's Cable Sasser. Hi, I'm Cable Sasser from Panic. The golden joystick for best gaming hardware, I think, truly celebrates the tech that makes gaming tick. Although, to be fair, if your games are ticking, definitely get that looked at before the warranty expires because that can become like a whole thing. Uh, from eye-watering visuals of the hottest graphics hardware to, you know, brain-melting effects of the latest VR gear. This year's nominees make gaming more vivid and also make our desks more cluttered, but, you know, in a good way, I think. As part of the team that makes the Playdate handheld gaming system, available 2021, we have a newfound appreciation of just how difficult it is to bring hardware to market. From writing the software, designing the hardware, uh, working with the factory, manufacturing the tests, uh, even packaging and distribution, it's a whole thing. And I think that this year's crop of nominees have all passed the test and made something quite remarkable. Now, one note, in case you were planning to get upset, you will not see the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X in the list of nominees. Extinguish your pitchforks. That is only because uh, they were not available on the market when the voting began. So maybe next year, I'm sure they'll do just fine. Here are our nominees. TCA Sidestick. Airbus Edition. Razer Kishi Mobile Pad for xCloud. Turtle Beach Stealth 700 Gen 2. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080. PC Engine Mini. Oculus Quest 2. Vulcan 120 IMO Keyboard And the winner is... NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080!
Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who voted for the GeForce RTX 3080 as the best gaming hardware for the Golden Joystick Awards 2020. Uh, I've had an overwhelming response to this GPU from fans and critics. It's so positive and we can't wait for more people to go hands on with the 3080. And I just want to take this opportunity to give a big shout out to all the people who worked on the 3080 behind the scenes, all the engineers and people developing this groundbreaking architecture. It's been our biggest generational leap ever and it just wouldn't have been possible without them. As well as the people who supported our RTX vision, 2020 has been an amazing year for us with the new product, but also having titles like Minecraft and Fortnite and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War supporting this feature set as well as CD Projekt Red coming out with Cyberpunk 2077. So again, just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supported us throughout this year and people voting for this GPU as the best gaming hardware of the year. Uh, hope you all have a great Christmas. Keep safe and spend time with family and friends. Thank you. Next up, we're adding to our Hall of Fame. This award recognizes influential and long-running game series or developers, which perfectly summarizes this year's winner, Team 17. Let's take a look at their amazing back catalog, including the Worm series, which launches a new installment next week. For our next award, we head to the blue corner with PlayStation Game of the Year. To give the award, please welcome game director of last year's winner, Days Gone, Jeff Ross. Hi there. It's great to be here presenting the award for PlayStation Game of the Year. With the PlayStation 5 finally out in the wild, it's an exciting time for all of us to look to the future. But before we do that, I just want to look back and, and show how amazed I've been at everything the creators have achieved on the PS4 and PSVR this year. From Samurai Adventures, to an infinite game builder, to putting us in the VR shoes of Mr. Tony Stark himself. It's been a year of unmissable experiences. And again, any game that lets you fly in the suit and truly feel like Iron Man has to be special. Here are the nominations for PlayStation Game of the Year. The Last of Us Part Two. Ghost of Tsushima. Neo 2. Dreams. Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Marvel's Iron Man VR. Spelunky 2. Fall Guys.
and the winner is The Last of Us Part Two. Wow. Uh, hey, thanks everybody here from Naughty Dog uh, for the Golden Joysticks voting us the the PlayStation Game of the Year. Um, it's been a, it's been a busy year. It's been a crazy year, and uh, this means a lot to us. Uh, from everyone at Naughty Dog, uh, we thank you. Um, to everyone at Naughty Dog, we thank you guys, the team, at, uh, everyone at home right now, um, and just the love and effort that was put into this game. Uh, it's unlike anything that I've ever seen in my career, and uh, just much love to the team back at home. Uh, yeah, I wanted to echo that. Uh, thank you to everyone at Naughty Dog. Thanks to all our partners at Sony. Uh, for all of the support, helping us make this game and get it out there to people in this just like unbelievable year and these like crazy circumstances. Uh, wanted to give a shout out as well to uh, the other nominees. Um, it's an honor to be in such great company here. And uh, honestly, shipping a game in these circumstances uh, deserves an award of its own. Uh, so thank you guys so much. Uh, and thanks especially to all the fans that voted all the fans that have supported the game, all the fans that have like written us letters or done cosplay or uh, sending us uh, nice tweets and stuff. We really appreciate all that stuff. And um, yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Naughty Dog. Oh, that makes me so happy. I'm so thrilled to be a part of that project. Next up, it's Team Green's moment in the spotlight. To present Xbox Game of the Year, please welcome from the Coalition, Gears of War campaign design director, Matt Searcy. Hey. Matt here from The Coalition. It's an honor to be here presenting the Xbox Game of the Year. I think there's an achievement for that. Either way, one look at tonight's shortlist tells you what a great time it is to be an Xbox fan. Where else would you see the 2D majesty of Ori and the Will of the Wisps rubbing shoulders with the brutal moral dilemmas of the RPG epic Wasteland 3? And the best news of all, more than half of these games are available on Xbox Game Pass right now. So you really got no excuse to not go and try them. Tonight's nominees are... Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Deep Rock Galactic Tell Me Why Bleeding Edge Minecraft Dungeon Yakuza Zero Wasteland Free Ori and the Will of the Wisps And the winner is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Hey everyone, I'm actually calling Thomas in. He doesn't know yet. Know what? Hey Thomas, how are you doing? Yeah. Just just smoking a pipe? <laughs> smoking my pipe, I'm level designing, what's up? Well, I'm actually live right now and I got the news that we won uh, the best Xbox game of the year at the Golden Joystick Awards. Well, that's really cool. That's good news. Yeah, let's let's. Uh, what do you have to say? <laughs> Just awesome. I uh, can't believe it. Uh, it's really really cool. Um, the hard work paid off, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, I think we should thank our team for super super hard Absolutely. four years of incredible work. We should thank Microsoft for letting us making the game we wanted to make and everybody that voted for Ori at these awards. Thank you guys so and much. And our families and all our friends and so on, right? Because finishing the game was not easy. Um, so they didn't see that much of us towards the end. But yeah, I mean, I, I think we have some really great talent in the team and some great they have some great support as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you great so news. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 
Our final platform prize is Nintendo Game of the Year. Who's that emerging from a warp pipe? Why, it's our next host, Gary Witta. Hello, Gary Witta here. Thank you so much for inviting me to present this very special award here at the Golden Joysticks Awards. I am just about old enough to remember uh, from my rookie days as a games journalist in the late 80s and early 90s, attending some of the very, very first Golden Joysticks Awards ceremonies in London. So it's a very special uh, privilege and honor for me to be invited back all those years later uh, to present this very special award. And it's a very special award for me in particular, Nintendo Game of the Year, because I am such a big, big Nintendo fan ever since I imported a Japanese Super Famicom uh, into the UK so I could play uh, Pilot Wings and Super Mario World before it was uh, officially released in the UK. I've just been the biggest Nintendo fan. And that love for Nintendo, uh, for those of you who have been particularly bored over the last year, will know uh, that uh, it even led me to create my very own talk show inside a Nintendo game, Animal Crossing, animal talking, uh, what a lot of fun that was. So without further ado, please allow me to read you the nominees for Nintendo Game of the Year. Paper Mario, the Origami King. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Animal Crossing New Horizons Super Mario Brothers 35 Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training for Nintendo Switch Ninjala Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And the winner is... Animal Crossing New Horizons! Hello everyone watching from home. Uh, I'm Nicholas Wegness from Nintendo UK and I'm very happy and proud to accept this award on behalf of the development team back in Japan at Nintendo. Uh, as you know, lots of people are enjoying relaxing life, taking care of the island in Animal Crossing New Horizons. This is something that makes us very happy and especially as well that we know the product is helping a lot of people to stay connected with their loved ones online or to enjoy basically living in that island in the, in the household. We really would like to thank uh, the Golden Joysticks and really we would like to wish everyone to keep safe in these difficult times. This award again for us goes obviously to our very talented developers back in Japan. Thank you so much. Okay, before we resume the console wars, let's have another trailer. And it's a true Clash of the Titans. <laughs> You can wishlist Override 2 on Steam right now. Speaking of which, it's time to remember that good things come to those who wait. It's Most Wanted Game. 
Let's take a look at this year's nominees. Halo Infinite. Elden Ring. Horizon Forbidden West. God of War Next. Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart. Kerbal Space Program 2. Resident Evil 8, Village. Gotham Knights. Starfield. Death Group. Hitman 3. The Medium. And the winner is the next God of War game. Sadly, developers Sony Santa Monica weren't able to record an acceptance video today, but we'd like to extend their thanks to everyone who voted. And speaking of games of tomorrow, it's time for another shiny exclusive trailer. Let's head down to our secret lair. Ivania was my country. It was great because I made it so. Yet, they took my country from me. To make things even, I must take the world from them. They challenge me on my day of victory. Speaking of evil geniuses, next up is Critics' Choice, which is chosen by our panel of journalists from GamesRadar.com, PCGamer.com, and other future gaming brands. You may know our critics from such previous works as the numbers you get cross about on Metacritic. Here's their pick for Best of 2020. Hades, I accept this message. <sighs> wow. Out of all of the incredible games released this year, so many of which helped us through the weeks and months during what's been a, let's say, interesting time. Uh, you picked Hades as Critics' Choice in the Golden Joysticks Awards. That's amazing. Thank you so much to the judges. 
we loved working on this game. It was a game designed around the people that we have on our team, a game that we felt we could do in a particular way, kind of in our own style. We've always looked for that quality in the games we've made. And once we felt like we were on a solid enough foundation with what we were doing, we started jamming Hades full of small little details, even knowing that uh, players may not encounter many of them. Because we figure it's those small details that we often think back on when it comes to thinking about our, our favorite games. So have enough of them in there and maybe you'll run into one or two as you play. Um, and apparently that worked out. We're about 20 people at Supergiant, but really uh, a lot more people than that uh, contributed to making this game a reality. Uh, there's our amazing voice cast that brought our characters to life. Uh, there's our tireless QA team that had to discover every nook and cranny in our biggest game ever. Uh, there's our partners and friends in the development community who answered our nonstop questions about how to run an early access game since we've never done that before. And of course, there's our amazing player community, including our uh, community translators and beta testers who kept us focused, uh, kept us working on the stuff that mattered and, and gave us invaluable feedback every step of the way. And a uh, special shout out uh, to our families. Uh, this game is about family and without our families, uh, this game couldn't have happened. They supported us all the way through. So to our collaborators, uh, to my colleagues, to our community, congratulations and thank you so much uh, for helping make this game real and what it is today. Before we reveal the ultimate game of the year, we have one final trailer of the night. If you like things spooky and next gen, this is for you. Peggy 18. The lake is where the lady lives, a dangerous place. I don't understand why Nanny would let me go swimming there. Strangely, all the fish died this summer. It smells horrible there now, like death. My room was so cozy and comfortable back then. Piece by piece. I need to get it out. I need to make that pain go away. We're delighted to announce that Martha is Dead is coming to PS5, and you can wishlist it on Steam right now. Well, in five minutes, because right now we've reached the final award of the night. Don't worry, this isn't when I reveal a second playable host and you have to do the whole show again. Although I will ask Travis to join me again for Ultimate Game of the Year. Hello, I have made it back to the main stage. <laughs> Throughout tonight's awards, we have celebrated the individual disciplines of game creation, but this is where all those skills meet for a moment of video game perfection. This was our biggest ultimate game of the year list ever, spanning 20 games. And you cast millions of votes to pick the one title that came to define 2020, in recognition of a year where games have meant more than ever before. Let's count down the top five games to reveal our ultimate winner. At number five, it's Ghost of Tsushima. At number four, it's Doom Eternal. At number 
three. We have Final Fantasy VII Remake. And at number two, it's Genshin Impact. But the winner of Ultimate Game of the Year 2020 is The Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> I am not going to lie. This is pretty sweet. Um... I guess for one, it's just amazing to be in company of such amazing games. It's been an incredible year for games and we are fans of every single other game on this list. Um, to the team, um, to my team, to our team that pour their heart and soul into this game. I know you guys don't do it for the sales or for these awards, but I hope this is some form of validation of the thing that we made. Um, I could not be prouder of this game and the team that put it together and how they lifted each other up when we needed to throughout making it, throughout launching it, and then post-launching it. Um, you guys are my family. Before I forget also, speaking of family, um, our cast, and I especially want to give a shout out to Ashley Johnson and Laura Bailey, who just killed it in more ways than one, is... Uh, Ellie and Abby. The game would not be what it is without your guys' um, contributions, your um, amazing performances. Um, and then I guess finally, since I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing from me, uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, thank you to every single fan that voted for us. Uh, this being a fan award, you have no idea what it means to me and the rest of the team, and we will keep working hard um, to make you proud. Thank you. And as we crown your ultimate game of the year, we wave goodbye to the 38th annual Golden Joystick Awards. Whether you're watching on Twitch, YouTube, or GamesRadar.com, thank you for joining us on the virtual stage and making your voice known by voting. You can head to GamesRadar.com for a recap of this year's show and more details on our amazing trailers. Congratulations again to all the winners. Thanks to all the nominees for another great year of gaming. Before we say goodbye for good, we've got one last treat in store. To help play out the 38th annual Golden Joysticks and recap everything that happened, it's the sensational Harry Mack. Enjoy the performance and we'll see you again next year. Good night. Check one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on, people out there? My name is Harry Mack. It's an honor and blessing for me to be rocking for y'all right now at the Golden Joystick Awards. How's everybody feeling? What an incredible event. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is Harry Mack. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Yes, indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, my name is Harry Mack. I am a freestyle rapper, which means I'm known for improvising lyrics off the top of my head without a plan. And we're going to demonstrate that for you here right now today. I am joined currently by my first guest, uh, Ben X. Ben, thank you so much for being here with me, man. Hello, my pleasure. How are you feeling today? Very good. Thank you. Very good. Pleasure to be nominated. Yes, yes. Sucks to lose, but, you know, pleasure to be nominated. Indeed, indeed. Well, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations on the nomination. And uh, I have good you. news for you. Uh, we have an opportunity right now for us both to win uh, in terms of co-collaborating on some freestyle rap. <laughs> so I'm really excited to, uh, to get into this. Um, are, you, uh, 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 are you familiar at all with freestyle rapping? Uh, I have seen 8 Mile. 
There you go. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> well, then, uh, you, you know, that's where a lot of us got our first introduction into freestyling. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here's what we're going to do, man. I want to make some magic with you. I can't do it by myself. I would love if you would be so kind as to hit me with three random words or, you know, they can be short phrases if you want. Just three bits of uh, inspo for me to uh, create a freestyle rap. Okay. Uh, would you like them right now? Yes. Hit me whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, first one, uh, to promote my game, Lair of the Clockwork Gods, I'm going to say clockwork. Clockwork. Perfect. Uh, second one is uh, regret. Regret. And third one is adventure. Adventure. These are awesome. All right. So uh, clockwork, regret, and adventure, correct? Oh, yes. Yes, please. Okay, let me drop a beat and we'll get into it. You ready? Oh, yes. Here we go. Ah, come on. Hey, hey. One, two, one, two. Check it out. Ah, one, two, one, two. Check it out. Ah, one, two, one, two. Golden Joystick. Come on. It's your boy, Harry Matt. Come on. Here we go, yeah. Here we go. All the way freestyle off top. Check it out. Uh, uh. Yeah, and when it comes to lyrics, I'm about to rock first. I practice on the daily, you could call it clockwork. Uh, hey yo, y'all know I'm about to cause a flow that is colossus. Know the time like my watch is on my wrist right now when it's ticking with the seconds. I'ma do this as clockwork, I reckon. It's every Mac, y'all know I pull my lyrics off the shelf. I turn into beast rapper when the clock strikes 12. I be ready for whatever, my flows, they are infinite, man. I be running laps around tracks like the minute hand. I'm doing what I'm feeling, you know we could be friends. Tapping in from the AM onto the PM. Yeah, y'all know my lyrics leaving the floor. I had to get busy at the Golden Joystick Awards. And yo, we about to make it happen because I'm pressing the threat. They stepping in correct to Mac and now they having regrets. Come on, I'm in the session and the kid is snapping. These rappers step to Mac and then they wish they had it. Uh, hey yo, for my name, you rack your mind. Rappers saying if I could just go back in time, man, I would have done it different. Cause right now I be losing. But when it comes to bars, yo, I'm constantly improving. And by the way, we about to rewind the clock back to the beginning. Cause currently me and Ben are winning. Yeah. Hey yo, I'm about to leave like everybody blessed. Shouts out to my very first special guest. We connected right now, and you know I'm bit lyrics in the dirty state. The Golden Joystick Awards, it's the 38th edition. I'm making people listen when it comes to kicking rhymes. Every Mac is on a mission. I'll still be freestyling when I'm old with the dentures. Every time I kick a rhyme, take you on an adventure. Yeah, and y'all know that we about to make it happen. Uh, hey yo, he's like my hype man rapping. Tapping in with me when I'm on it, they return me right to the core while we all up on the journey. Yeah, hey yo. Yo, this game right here was meant for us. Lyrically, yo, my bars are adventurous. Yeah, hey, yo, I'm about to kick a crazy free. Come along on this adventure, go from A to B. Many wild events, they might occur in between. Hey, yo, I'm moving so fast, I might look blurry, my G. I'm on another plane forever. When I spit, they start to get floored. Shout to my homie Ben X up on Discord. Tapping in with Mac and once again to make it go. I be getting busy with the freestyle flow. I'm about to come back at y'all once again. But in the meantime, make some noise for Ben. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> amazing thank you man thank you appreciate you hopping on with me and uh providing a little inspo uh we're, we're we're blessed to have you on pleasure man that was great fun thank you thank you so much thank you so much and uh <clears throat> excuse me congrats again on the nomination best of luck to you in in uh in in future years all right <laughs> thank you thank you very much take care my friend peace peace Yes, indeed. I'm done. Let's get Anastasia in here. Shouts out to my man, Wes, helping me bring people on. How you doing, my friend? Well. All right. Anastasia in the mix. I'm here. She's here. We're ready. Uh, Anastasia, can you, could you turn your camera back on? I can't see you. There we go. Yes, we got you now. How are you? Good. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I love the background. It's looking very official. <laughs> you know, it's way better than the mess that's in my bedroom. So yes. this is COVID style. This is the new, like, hide it in your closet. Just throw up a, a screen. Seven I love repeat. it. <laughs> yes. Something a lot of us can relate to uh, in 2020, I'm sure. Um, yeah, for me, the messy part of my room is the part that's not being shown on camera right now. So, uh, you know, I just push the mess off to the side. 
<laughs> exactly. Uh, well, hey, I want to thank you so much for hopping on with me. Uh, really appreciate you being here. Um, as I'm sure you've heard by now, my name is Harry Mack. I'm a freestyle rapper, and you and I are uh, going to collaborate right now to make some magic for everybody watching the Golden Joystick Awards right now. Don't worry. You don't have to rap unless you want to. Um, but I told you that was a requirement. Nope, no rapping. <laughs> no rapping. Public service. <laughs> right. We, we, we can't go against our contracts here. Okay. Um, <laughs> in that case, I would love for you to provide me with three random words um, to inspire my freestyle. All right. Um, one, lipstick, because thank you very much. Because of this ability today, uh, I haven't been out of my house much, so I got to wear some lipstick. Beautiful. Um, um, because part of my job is supporting next generation talent and providing scholarships. Um, let's do scholars. Love it. Love and it. And third one, let's tie it to the show. Um, winners. Winners. I love it. Those are great. Okay. So yeah. lipstick, scholars, and winners. Is that right? Yes. Let's okay. do it. Let's do it. Here we go. Once again, the beat is dropping. Uh, come on, hey, 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 come on, hey, listen, ah, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. I do a trick with my lyric like I'm busting a kickflip. Situation code red, kinda like lipstick. You know that I studied, I be the rap scholar. I'ma be the winner every time my rhymes holler. Yeah, off the top, I do a trick like a kickflip. Situation code red, like color of a lipstick. Uh, Y'all know I study rap like a scholar. I'ma be the winner every time my rhymes holler. Listen, and hey, yo, the Mac ain't down with no fake stuff. Rappers rhyme kinda like lipstick. They make up their stories. Hey yo, but I be on another plane. I'm getting busy when I'm kicking lyrics off the brain. Hey yo, I'm doing this, y'all know we getting paid in a major way Like lipstick, I come in many shades Uh, y'all know that I'm lyrically blazing And she said this here was the perfect occasion To pull out the lipstick, it's time now to explore the scene Didn't really need it previous months in quarantine Yeah, hey yo, I'm spitting in the freeway On most days, I can't even get out of my PJs What's the purpose? Hey yo, I'm here with rapping service And every time I'm rhyming, I be making rappers nervous I'm all up in it to win it, y'all know I truly said it Mac off the top without no cosmetics, let's go I'm about to bust a trick like a kickflip Situation code red, kinda like lipstick Hey, I study freestyler like a scholar I'ma be the winner every time my rhymes holler Let's go, I'm about to bust a trick like a kickflip Situation code red, kinda like lipstick Studying these rhymes, I grip the mic and then I do this The lyrical scholar, I be the rap student Matter of fact, I'm better when I'm dropping my lectures I be teaching all the scholars, I'm the freestyle person Professor, yeah, and this right here is rapping penetration, innovation to inspire future generations. Yo, I feel like me and you might be related, cause both of us are inspiring all the young creatives. Let's go, hey yo, it starts with the vision, and even before anybody wants to listen, you gotta keep moving, you gotta keep persisting, and never look back, keep on going with your mission. A bit of inspiration for the ones that's getting started, who knows, a few years you might be the top regarded artist in the game, so push through the pain keep on going on your mission y'all we gotta maintain it's like this off the top i'm about to do a kick flip situation code red kind of like lipstick study all the rhymes i'm the rapping scholar i'm gonna be the winner every time my mind hollers like that i'm about to bust a freestyle kick flip situation code red kind of like lipstick study all the rhymes i'm the rapping scholar i'm gonna be the winner all right listen one more check it hey hey over instrumentals i'm gonna let my verse race i'm gonna be the winner i'm about to come in first place can't think they better than the mac yo is this dude kidding when it comes to rapping i'm about to get the blue ribbon first place guaranteed y'all they know me winning when i'm spitting i'm about to get the trophy yeah i'm the one these rappers be annoyed with if rap for video games i get the golden joystick come on we all up on it i'ma get it done it's mac up in the session and i'm straight up having fun tapping in with all of my people y'all know i'm making them back down quarantine time so she needs the custom background i feel it hey yo yeah situation <laughs> She got up many people depressed I have to clean up my mess and push it off to the side I'll take you all on the ride Golden joystick awards, turn it up for the vibe It's like that, off the mind 
I'm about to bust a kickflip. Situation cold red, kinda like lipstick. Study in my rhymes, I'm the lyric scholar. I'ma be the winner every time my mind hollers like this. Hey, off the mind, I'm about to do a kickflip. Situation cold red, kinda like lipstick. Study in my lyrics, hey, the rapping scholars. I'ma be the winner every time my mind hollers. Let's go. go, go, go. <laughs> thank you awesome. thank you thank you i appreciate it thank you for providing the inspiration uh and you know what we'll be in touch about the back end royalty splits because it's my understanding this song is blowing up in japan right now we can expect to see some real money coming in soon so uh always big in japan always big in japan yes 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 huge following out there um <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with me. I truly appreciate you. You enjoy the rest of your night, okay? Take it easy. You too. Peace. Awesome. Okay. Wes, who we got next? Jordan in here. Keep it rolling. Jordan in the house. You. Hey, Jordan, how you feeling? Good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Camera's coming back on. Amazing. It's on. There we go. There we go. What's happening, my friend? How's it going? I'm good. Zero complaints. Loving the background. Thank you. If you can't tell, I, lo I love games. Uh, I'm a writer in the industry, so... Beautiful. You know, yeah, got to rep my industry. I love it, man. What, what games have you uh, worked on? Uh, two big ones. Uh, I was one of the writers on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and then for this year, Ghost of Tsushima, which got a bunch of nominations. So Amazing. Congrats, man. Congrats. That's Thank incredible. You. Uh Okay, cool. Well, I'm sure you've been uh, hearing kind of what's going on here. Um, oh, yeah. We are going to collaborate right now. I, I am very appreciative of you stepping in here, stepping up to the plate to help me uh, hopefully create a fire freestyle rap. So what I need from you uh, is just three random pieces of inspo, three random words or short phrases, something to uh, get me going here. For sure. Uh, I'm going to rap Ghost of Tsushima, so I'm going to say Samurai. Samurai. For sure. Yes. yes. Love it. Um, the guy that got me into the gaming so long ago, the face of gaming when I think about games, Mario. Yes. So it's got to be Mario. Of course. Um, and one of the most fun that I've had playing games this year is from Among Us. So let's say Imposter. Imposter. I love it. Okay, I love it. So uh, we started with Samurai, Mario, and Imposter, right? There we go. Okay, let's get it. I'm going to drop a beat. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yo. Ah, yeah. Yeah, okay, ah, uh. okay, ah, uh. yeah, yeah, come on, hey, come on, hey, come on. Said I be looking in the mirror like, man, I'm fly. I be training on the daily like a samurai. I be famous in the industry like Mario. My imposters know I'm going way too hard with flows. I be looking in the mirror saying, man, I'm fly. Said I be training on the daily like a samurai. I be famous in my industry like Mario. My imposters better know just how hard I go. Come on, come off the top when I'm kicking my bars. Feel like a samurai with ninja stars. I'm about to throw them, you know we ain't done yet. Matter of fact, I come through with the nunchucks. Every Mac and you know that I spark. I'm treating my lyrics like they martial arts. You know I'm ready to come with the raps. If I was a samurai, I'd wear all black. Normally do, but right now I'm in green. Still be a samurai up on the scene. Every Mac come off the top of the team. When I be rapping, I'm living my dream. Yeah, you know that I'm live on the mic like a samurai. I'm ready to risk my life. I'm ready to give it all for my cause. When I'm off the top, man, I spit with no flaws. Get down when I'm in it and you know I got what you need Coming through kind of like Assassin's Creed Y'all know I'm rocking in the cypher Shout to my man cause he be a famous writer h Mac getting it done and yo I'm coming with creations He be getting mad nominations Every time I'm spitting I'm about to make him back down I know you love games, homie, by your background Looking in the mirror I'm like, man, I'm fly I be training on the daily like a samurai Said I'm famous in my industry like Mario My imposters better know just how hard I go I be looking in the mirror, saying, man, I'm fly. I be training on the daily like a samurai. I be famous in my industry like Mario. 
oh, my imposters better know just how hard I go. Listen, uh, always going hard with flows, ayy, feeling like a Mario, ayy, lyrically the world's eighth wonder, ayy, shout to Mario, most famous plumber, ayy, I'ma put it down, I'm about to bust soon, lyrics get big like Mario from Mushrooms, yeah, you know that I'm living my life, I'm about to find the secret mission underneath the pipe, I be going in, I spit hard from the heart, I just race around the tracks like Mario Kart, yeah, you know that I spit for sure, favorite system was the 64, Mac call up on it and I'm flowing fly, it's a one shot kill like it's golden eye, yeah, you know that I'm flow reporting, going off the ramp, 10 maybe snowboarding, Mac call up in it, I'm infinite when I hit ya, lyrically, I'm about to paint a picture, matter of fact, I think the industry needs me, married to the beat, ayo, we brothers like Mario to Luigi, a Wario, yeah, you know you ain't heard me before my bro, h back, I'ma put it down forever, Mario, bars, man, the kid's too clever, I be looking in the mirror, saying, man, now I'm fly, I be training on the daily like a samurai, yeah, famous in my industry like Mario, and my imposters better know, hold up, yeah, last verse, let's go, uh, you know I'm eating them all up like pasta, I be the type that might pull up in the Mazda, whenever I'm on this, smoke mics like a Rasa, it's every Mac, I'm slaying all my imposters, all of my enemies, needing the remedies, y'all know I'm coming through, bringing the energy, got so much energy, thought there was 10 of me, step in correct, you get twisted like Hennessy, mate, I'm about to leave them all floored, rocking live at the Golden Joystick Awards, yeah, you know that I'm spitting up in here, this right here is the 38th year, shout out to y'all, peace to everyone that's in it, every Mac you know, I be stretching so infinite, when it comes to rhymes, man, I never been timid, best off the top, every Mac I always been it, yeah, he got the background with the pillow, I be coming off the top with the ill flow, many different colors, I can see him right there, he's into games, and we all so aware, yeah, every Mac, y'all getting slain, peace to everybody playing video games, peace to the people coming through right now, when y'all best remember Harry Mack is a name, let's go, in the mirror saying, man, I'm fly, I be training on the daily like a samurai, I be famous in my industry like Mario, my imposters better know just how hard I go, it's like that, <laughs> oh, so good, thank you, so man, so good, oh, Appreciate that. Thank you, Jordan. Appreciate that so much, my friend. Uh, and thank you for being here with me and inspiring my freestyle. Um, <laughs> Happy huge, to. Huge shout out to, uh, to, to you uh, for being nominated and, 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 and to everybody who was thank a part you. of the event. And uh, thank you all so much for, uh, for having me here. Much appreciated. It's great. Uh, thanks. Hey, brother. Keep doing your thing. We'll tap in some other time. You too. All right, for sure. Okay. Peace, peace. Take care. All right. And that was... Our third and final guest, correct? It's a wrap. Leave him, leave you. It's a wrap. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, VVS, and I believe that's the end of my time. Um, so shout out to uh, the Golden Joystick Awards. Um, once again, my name is Harry Mack. I'm live on my channel right now, uh, twitch.tv slash Harry Mack official. So uh, I might head over there and kick uh, uh, one or two more freestyles for anybody that's watching. And uh, once again, shout out to everybody who participated in this event. Shout out to the Golden Joystick Award. Shout out to uh, Games Radar and everybody else involved. Really appreciate y'all having me. Okay, keep shining. Peace and blessings. Hope to see y'all over on my channel soon. All right, peace. Man, 2020, what a year. Join me December 14th through 18th, along with my fellow streamers and the ESA Foundation to unite the video game community to say goodbye to 2020. We'll be streaming all week for a variety of different charities. You don't want to miss that. And if you want to donate now, visit the ESA Foundation website. See you then.